Hi everyone, welcome to the session. In this session, I'm going to continue my discussion on consolidation accounting. So in this session, I'm going to discuss about intercompany transaction. So what are intercompany transaction and how do you account for intercompany transaction? So this is what I'm going to focus on this video. So I'll be discussing intercompany transaction. So when you take intercompany transaction, uh, mainly the intercompany transaction consists of intercompany sales, intercompany lendings, intercompany transfers of property, plant and equipment. So what are intercompany transactions? So this is mainly consists of intercompany intercompany sales intercompany lendings and intercompany transfers of property plant and equipment PPE so these are the areas that will be tested in your exam so first and foremost let me discuss about intercompany sales so in order to discuss this let me take an illustration so let's assume p company p company has sold 100 dollar worth of goods to s company okay so let's assume there is no profit okay so without profit let's try to understand how to account for this intercompany transaction. So P has sold $100 uh, worth of goods to S company. So as far as P is concerned, okay, so P will record this particular transaction in their books of account as sales. Okay, so they will treat, the P company will treat this particular transaction as a sale. So as a result of that, the P company will record this particular transaction as account receivable debit $100 and a sales account credit $100. Okay, so if you take the standalone separate financial statement for P company, P company will treat this as a sale. So as a result of that, if it's a credit sale, they will debit the accounts receivable account and sales account will be credited. So when it comes to S company, so as far as S company is concerned, so S company will treat this particular transaction as purchases. So, as far as his company is concerned, this is a purchase. So, so when there is a purchase, how they will record this particular transaction? So, if you take the separate financial statement, so that will be purchases account debit 100 and accounts payable account will be credited 100. So this is how this particular transaction will be recorded in their separate financial statements. Okay, so when it comes to the group, so this is the group. So what is the impact on the group financial statement and how do you account for this particular transaction? So when it comes to the group, Group is treated as a separate single entity, economic entity. So as a result of that, the transactions uh, within the group has to be eliminated. So whatever the transaction they have done with the outside party has to be recorded in the group. So within the group has to be eliminated because they have not made so as far as 
the group is concerned, group has made neither sale nor purchases. So therefore, these particular transactions, basically we are discussing about consolidated financial position, how to prepare a consolidate, consolidated financial position. So when you take the consolidated financial position, when you prepare the consolidated financial position, you need to follow the line by line method. So when you consolidate the accounts receivable, all the current assets and current liabilities will have to be added together. Okay. So when it comes to the group, since these are intercompany transactions, these transactions will not be appeared in the group financial position. So this has to be eliminated. So basically, when you take the consolidation schedule, this I have already discussed how to prepare the consolidated uh, consolidation schedule when you prepare the consolidated financial position. So if you want to watch that particular video, I have given the link. So what you can do is please go and watch for your understanding. So when you prepare the consolidated financial position, there will be an adjustment column. So in the adjustment column, you need to you need to eliminate this particular transaction. So accounts receivable has to be eliminated. So therefore, when you take the group, there won't be any accounts receivable balances in the group. And when you take the accounts payable, this has to be eliminated. So there won't be any accounts payable, uh, accounts payable uh, due to parent company. So this has to be eliminated here. So as far as the group is concerned, in order to eliminate these accounts receivable and accounts payable, so you will have to pass a journal entry in the consolidated financial uh, to arrive at the consolidated financial position. So what will be the uh, journal entry? So that will be accounts payable will be debited 100 and accounts receivable will be credited 100. So thereby you will eliminate the intercompany transaction so that that will not be recorded in the group financial position. So this is how basically you record the intercompany transaction. So when there is intercompany transaction, so we need to eliminate from the group financial position. So it will be recorded in the separate financial statement. However, when it comes to group financial uh, position, so intercompany transaction will be eliminated. Now let's continue the same example. Let's assume his company has settled fifty dollars. So they had a they had an outstanding balance of. $100 of which his company has settled $50. So as far as his company is concerned, how they will record this particular transaction? So what they will do is they will debit accounts payable by $50 and their bank account by, they will credit the bank account by $50. So once it is settled, they will record this particular transaction. As a result of that, at the end of the financial period, so what will be the accounts payable? So accounts payable credit $100, accounts payable debit $50. So therefore, the net accounts payable will be credit $50. So at the end of the financial period, they have a balance of uh, $50 due to be paid, uh, it is to be paid to parent company. Okay, so let's assume this $50 amount has not been recorded by parent company. So what is the assumption? We'll assume 
uh, the parent company has not he has not yet received fifty dollars. So therefore, this amount has not been recorded in the books of P. Okay, so they have not recorded this particular transaction. Now, in a situation like this, when it comes to the group financial position, what is the impact? Okay, so this is what we need to identify. Now, when you see, when you look at this particular transaction, this company has paid this $50, but this amount has not reached to P. Is that clear? Okay, so therefore they have not recorded this particular transaction. And also when you compare the accounts receivable balance and accounts payable balance, this uh, in the books of P it is $100, however in the books of S it is $50, an unequal amount. So these balances are not matching each other. Okay, so when there is a situation like this, if you, if you come across an unequal amount between the accounts receivable and accounts payable, intercompany receivables and payables. So what you need to do is, you need to identify the reasons for this mismatching. Okay, so if it is an unequal amount, there will be two adjustments required when it comes to the group financial statement group financial position. So what are the two entries, two adjustments required? First of all, you identify the difference. So when you identify the difference, you have to record that difference in the group financial statements. So with regard to this particular transaction, there is a cash in transit. So we call it this particular thing as cash in transit. So this is this is cash in transit. Okay, so this particular cash in transit has to be adjusted in the group financial statement. So how you will adjust this particular transaction? First of all, you need to debit the cash by $50 and accounts receivable has to be credited by $50. So thereby, after recording this particular transaction in the group financial statement, okay, so your accounts receivable, there's a debit balance and credit balance. So that will be the net accounts receivable balance will be debit 50. Now, when you compare the Accounts receivable and accounts payable, it's the balances are equal. So balances are matching. So now what you need to do is the second adjustment has to be uh, passed. Second adjustment, second adjustment has to be made to eliminate these two particular uh, transaction. These two balances. You need to eliminate these two intercompany uh, receivable and payable balances. So when it comes to group financial uh, statement, financial position, these intercompany balances will not be reflected in the group. Now the balances are equal, so what you need to do is you need to eliminate from accounts receivable will be eliminated, accounts payable also eliminated, so therefore group there won't be any balances, uh, there won't be any balances will be recorded in the group financial position. So let's recap what we have discussed in this intercompany transaction. First and foremost, we discussed when there is intercompany transaction, intercompany receivables and balances has to be eliminated from the group financial statement. Okay, so because we, as far as the group is concerned, group has made neither sale nor purchases. As a result of that, so we need to eliminate intercompany transaction. Okay, so that is the first point. Second point is when you compare 
the, the parent and the subsidiary receivable and balances, intercompany balances, it should match, it should equal. So if it is equal, straight away you can eliminate. The second point is when you find, when you come across an unequal balances, intercompany balances, you need to find out the differences for these uh, mismatching, uh, differences for these unequal balances. So this may be due to cash in transit or uh, goods in transit. So you need to identify what are the reasons. If the cash in transit or goods in transit exist, what you need to do is you need to make an adjustment to the group financial statement. So how do you make the adjustment? You record this particular transaction, uh, either the cash in transit or goods in transit, you have to debit. So in this particular example, it's cash in transit. So what you can do is you can debit the cash and you have to credit the particular receivable account. So thereby you will equal, you will match the accounts receivable balance with the accounts payable balance with the other company. So thereby, once you make the adjustment for the cash in transit, so there will be another adjustment that you need to do because you need to eliminate the intercompany receivables and payables. So you eliminate that entry so that the group financial uh, statement will not reflect any intercompany transactions. So this is how you record the intercompany transaction uh, in the group financial statements. So with this I will conclude the session. So I will be discussing intercompany sales with unrealized profit in my next video. And uh, if you like to watch more videos on accounting and management accounting, what you can do is you can uh, hit the subscribe button and also please share this with your friends so that they will also get benefited. And I will see you soon with another video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.